Evening. I must say it's uh, good to uh, to be back here uh, with you. It's been prior to a few weeks ago. It was a while since uh, since I've been here. Um, you know, I'm I'm just thankful to be back with with my Deerfoot family to see JJ, Richard, and and all of you um, over the next few months uh, before I leave again. And I'm thankful for Richard uh, for allowing me to to have an opportunity uh, to give a, de- a, a Devo tonight. Um, I'm going to start off this devotional by, uh, by telling a story of what happened earlier this week. Uh, on Tuesday this past week, uh, I was in the, the fellowship hall uh, here at Deerfoot during uh, lunchtime, and uh, us, us ministers and, and Charlotte were gathered together for lunch. And uh, I was on my way to the coffee machine when I noticed on the ground a large black spider. Um, it scared me at first. I mean, it was, it was moving around, it was alive, and, and it scared me. But I did not resort to my usual reaction of uh, stomping on the spider with, with all my wrath. Um, <laughs> now, it must be stated uh, going forth that, that I do not like spiders. Uh, the spider was about the size of a female black widow, uh, but it did not have the uh, shape nor the hourglass mark uh, that exists on that species. Um, I, I called Richard over to, to just look at the spider, and, and he looked at it closely and he remarked that it was not a black widow, nor was it a brown recluse due to the, to the absence of a fiddle-shaped mark on its back. But instead of, in, uh, of stepping on the spider, I, I decided to spare it. Now, I don't know why I decided to spare it. Um, <laughs> maybe I felt some kind of compassion or, or pity for the spider. Maybe I was uh, slightly empathetic and felt as if I wouldn't want someone stepping on me for just being there. Um, the spider wasn't doing anyone any harm. Um, it was only moving slowly along the floor. But nonetheless, I, I knew that the spider did not belong there. Uh, I told uh, my, my fellow workers not to, to step on it, and, and Jeffrey gave me a, a paper towel, and I allowed the spider to walk on the napkin before I, I hurried to the door and uh, uh, placed it on the ground outside. I spared its life and put it into its new home, uh, the grassy yard right next to the playground. So you, <laughs> so you parents with uh, young kids, you're welcome. <laughs> I came back inside and, and I jokingly told Richard and Jeffrey that I chose to have mercy upon the spider. Now I did not think much of it until I, I went home that night. I sat and thought um, for a moment about the work day and and the weird encounter I had during my lunch break. The spider reminded me of myself and the rest of humanity, in a way. The spider was in a place it did not belong, doing something that a spider should not be doing. It deserved, by by most people's judgment, death. Nonetheless, I decided to have mercy upon it. And in a way, I bestowed it upon a great... uh, bestowed upon it uh, some kind of grace. The spider reminded me of, of my own sin. It reminded me of all the times that I disappointed God, trespassed against his will, and forsook, forsook him, though he is my father and I'm created in his image. I thought about the cross and the amount of undeserved love that it must have taken for God to to put his son on the cross for us, on our behalf. Then I thought about the mercy and grace that we have as a result of the cross and how I should be better about living under such graceful and merciful love. Much like a spider in a building, us humans are in a place that we do not belong. We do not belong apart from our Father in heaven. Sin is us being where we should not be, 
and it is also us not being where we should be. As creatures created in, in God's image, we are, to the best of our ability, striving to reflect his glorious nature. But because of sin, we are not where we should be. We have fallen short of the glory of God, Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Since we did not meet the standard by which we are cre uh, created to reflect, God would be just in squashing us underfoot like a spider. Death is the, the proper judgment and quality control for sin. However, God did not want us to endure eternal spiritual death. He did not want that for his creation. Rather, he chose to have mercy and compassion upon us. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. As I previously stated, I, I do not like spiders, but I chose to have mercy upon it, probably from pity. But God loves us. God really loves us. And he showed his love, his mercy, and his grace on the cross. And with the hope of heaven that we have, he's also showed us his grace. Could you imagine if I, for the spider, had built a large glass uh, terrarium and I filled it with all kinds of, of insects that would supply uh, all its needs for, for a lifetime? And I gave it a, a synthetic web that it could live on. It would not have to labor to to build its own web. God has given us something much better, and it supplies all our needs for eternity. Maybe you feel as if you've taken God's mercy and grace for granted, and hopefully your, your eyes are opened to what he's done for you, and it drives you to change your behavior. Maybe you've not yet received the mercy that comes uh, to those who obey the gospel. And the way, to the, the way to start is to repent of your sins, confess uh, that Jesus Christ is your Lord, and to make the decision to be born again by the waters of baptism. If you have any need, any, any need at all this evening, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.